Ladies and gents, sometimes it is better to be a big fish in a small pond. And I have a student interview here today uh, to go ahead and prove that. So Noe is making $15,000 uh, in Portugal serving real estate agents. And uh, yeah, all in all, it's an awesome student interview. So let's get into it. So ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another student interview. I'm wearing my cap today because under my cap, <laughs> I've got my little army haircut. Any of you guys that follow me on Instagram will, will know that I buzzed my hair. But we are here today with another student interview. We're joined with Noé from Portugal. Arsenal. And uh, yeah, he, uh, he just hit 15,000 uh, between June 6th and July 6th uh, with his agency serving real estate agents. Uh, so yeah, with no further ado, you want to introduce yourself a little bit about yourself, your agency, how you got started in this weird, weird and wacky world. Yeah, so in entrepreneurship, I got started like two or three years ago. The same way most entrepreneurs start like creating a fan page on Facebook or on Instagram. I, I did um, an Instagram page about gaming. I, I didn't game. I don't like to game, but I, I heard it was the future. That's like gaming is where the millionaires are. So yeah, I gotta go to gaming. <laughs> So I created an Instagram page, like grow that like 100K <clears throat> subscribers. And I started to do a couple of things like selling advertising, selling my own products. And eventually after working a lot and barely making a dime, and I, I switched to the service world. And that's the, the point where I also started to listen to your YouTube channel. I didn't want to invest in the course because I also didn't have the money to do it. <clears throat> so I invested. Uh, I started to watch your free uh, YouTube videos and I started like offering my services and I got a couple of clients here in Portugal by, by a couple, just really a couple, like two. <laughs> One of them stay with me for a, a, a year without me bringing in any like actual results, any proper ROI. Uh, like I, I you, sold must, you must be a very charismatic guy. I'm sorry. You must be a very charismatic guy. I wonder how those uh, client check-in calls went. <laughs> yeah, it was kind of a fight every call, but it was oh. pretty cool. And I, I worked really hard. It's not, it's not that I didn't want to bring them results, but as you say, like if the info product coaching niche is super complicated, super personal. Like um, most of coaches, like their business is them. And when you go to write copy and all that, it's, it's super difficult. So I had a lot of trouble. I, I gave my best. We did a couple of break events, but I managed to, to get the client for one year. But <clears throat> I was overworked. Like I, I worked all day for him. I was basically an employee. <laughs> uh, because before, between the Instagram page and, and the, the coaching client, I got a job. I was making $600, uh, $700 a month. <laughs> and um, like, but the guy gave me a car. So seven, seven hundred dollars a month, uh, full time, correct? Full time, yeah. And 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 I also the reason I just wanted to cut you off real quick is because a lot of times when people, you know, people are like, oh, but how, you know, why would a contractor work for you for five hundred dollars per month per client? And keep in mind, you're giving him multiple clients. Or how could you have a, a incredible, incredible media buyer? For 15, you know, if, if you're an agency owner making $15,000, $10,000 a month and it's time for you to bring on someone full, full time, uh, because that's a totally different boat than, you know, having someone as a contractor in terms of the level of work and attention they'll put in. And, you know, they're like, but why would a contractor work for you for $1,500 a month? Is $600 a month full time, sorry, is that like normal in a place like Portugal? In a place like Portugal, yes, yes. Uh, it's $700, the, the minimum wage, but most people have earn minimum wage. Like even the medium rate, not the minimum, is nine hundred dollars. <laughs> so, so there you go. You know, that, that's just what I wanted to mention. Is like, you know, I know to us it's like, you know, to, to for some, especially the people in the U.S. or the U.K., like it, it's shocking. But like, I mean, even everyone has a different discrepancy. Like everyone has a different touch point on what's normal. Like even um, uh, Kieran from my team has to remind me sometimes, like for me, I don't want anyone in my company to make less than 4,000 pounds a month, which is like $5,000 a month, like base salary. Yeah. Um, and he has to remind me sometimes like, that's not normal. Like normal in the UK is 2,500 pounds a month. In fact, a lot of people work for like 2k a month, like have a 24,000 pound a month, which is, or 24,000 pound a year, a $30,000 a year base salary. Like when you're 23, 24 or 22. Um, 
so yeah, that's just something I wanted to mention is like, wherever you go in the world, like I, I have sort of the highest perception of what is a normal salary. Uh, but then sometimes you really do have to remind yourself that in a lot of really good places, um, you know, we're not talking, <clears throat> uh, you know, we're not talking, um, bad areas of the world to us, um, impoverished areas of the world, un really heavily underdeveloped areas of the world. We're talking very, very, um, uh, affluent countries, to be honest. Um, that is the base and that is, that is the set point. So sorry to cut you off there. No, no problem. And I also had the same thought, but now that I run an actual agency, I see how cool it may for someone that likes, really likes Facebook ads, how cool it is it to just like get clients and you don't have to go after them. You just have to do Facebook ads. So it's pretty cool. My contractors love it. <laughs> and so I get that job for $600 a month. My plan was to say that for half and half and here to gather some money because I dropped out of college and um, like I was in uh, IT engineer and I think, hey man, I don't have a college degree. I don't have nothing. This is the best I can get like this job. And the guy gave me kind of a car, like he lent me the car. Yeah, you can use the car, just do the, I was thinking, yeah, it's, that's a pretty good job. And my family, hey, be grateful, man. <laughs> you have a job, you have a car. But I like, I, I went nuts for, for three months, like doing stupid shit. I'm sorry, do, can I say, can I curse? Yeah, go, go, yeah, yeah, yeah. Doing that's stupid stuff. I mean, you know me. <laughs> doing stupid stuff, um, like for, stupid work and it was a lot of logistics and a lot of stuff and I have to treat my my boss for doctor that pisses me off so much like I have to treat everyone by doctor something doctor that and they are just like um, lawyers and yeah it's I, I I was grateful for giving it the opportunity but I, I went nuts for three months so I quit the job and I started like that services thing uh, for that clients and I worked for a year and I was making some money, not, not a lot, like probably a thousand dollars best a month. Some, sometimes not even that I was basically making the same money. I was at the job, but at least I was, I wasn't in the same place and I was constantly believing I would get more clients. And then I invested in your course, course, like ending of 2019. Uh, because I, 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 I felt that something had to change. Like, that's what I thought sometimes in the client, uh, client debrief, uh, the briefs, I think is how it's called on the agency incubator. Like it's just, just get mad because once you get mad, some things, something changes. And I got really mad in, in December and something had to change. So I, I started to do more prospecting, got the client in MLM charged 1.5k for three months he paid the three, the three months in advance so, oh come on this is starting to get possible man. <laughs> so but again the same trap i felt i felt in the same trap because another uh, super difficult client and i i just overworked myself and couldn't get any more clients <clears throat> so then uh, i just stopped everything uh, didn't work for any more client and just spent like two weeks just building the basis like what do i want to serve what niches do i like what will be my service uh, what, how i'm going to plan this and not no more shiny object no more doing all the stuff at the same time so i made a list of all the of all the niches and started with dentists so figure out that i didn't like dentists i just then i just figured out i stopped going for those that people tell that that's where the money is i just Go for the one that you really like so if you couldn't work for any more niche if you just do the agency for the rest of your life what niche would you work on it's real estate i love real estate i love houses i love investing i don't invest but i love that world um, and just i just went with real estate and then i did something that you <laughs> always preach not to do but i i couldn't um i couldn't charge because i get what, what, where you come from with the free trials because you can get pretty cool uh, contractors in the other areas of the world from like, they have experience in the real estate niche. They always been in the dentist Here in Portugal. You, you struggle to find the media buyer, <clears throat> like someone that actually knows um, Facebook ads. And I, I can be picky. I, I can choose like from niche, uh, niche experience. Like I struggle to find the media buyer. So I just, 
found a media buyer and just told him, hey, let's do, found some campaigns on Facebook, uh, on YouTube, like what can I run for real estate? Just lead generation and found like three guys just before the pandemic and found like three guys willing to do a, a, a free um, trial. And that's it. Just, I just run some seven day or 14 day trials for them, lead generation like super basic stuff here in Portugal. That's the thing that's everyone tell me, just go to the, the U S and go to all those places. No, man, I want to be known in my new country because here in, in these small countries, and that's for everyone that tells like, just go to the U S in these small European countries. And in your country, you, you most likely become a superstar or you most likely become like uh, the niche guy or the, or the super guy, because there's not much competition. And if you go to the U.S., oh man, there's so many real estate marketing agencies, so many stuff. Um, and here, there, there's nothing. So my services, that's why I, I, I grew so, so quickly. Because the clients, when I pitched them my services, they were like blown away. They'd never seen anything like it. Here in Portugal, you can be a king with, uh, with a lead generation, with a lead ads and a Zapier to a spreadsheet, <laughs> with a, to a Google Sheets. And that's what I did. I did some free trials. Uh, lead ads to a spreadsheet, uh, a Google sheet, and just name, email, and phone number. It's free, man. You just pay the ad spend, and they were just blown away. With with the catch that they have to made me a, a paid a paid uh, a video testimonial, and they, I can use that for case studies. So that's what I did. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, I mean, look at, at the end. Of the day, this is why I love doing these student interviews because, like. First of all, I'm sure if you've ever seen any before, like anyone in a student interview starts talking about like, oh, E-man, like, and then agency incubator changed my life. And I'm just like, shut the fuck up. We're not here for testimonials. This, that. Like, I want to pick your brain. I want to have a bit of friction. And like, for me, I love when someone doesn't follow my advice. Um, and then either, you know, it doesn't work or it does work. And if it does work, then we can dissect it. Um, so no, I like the fact that you mentioned that free trials did work for you. Um, as I said, my, my issue all the time, uh, qu question though, with those free trials, did you end up signing them? Two. <laughs> I did three free trials, signed two clients from them, from that. Well, I, I have not, I have nothing to say to that. Um, yeah, that's very, very impressive. Um, it is definitely the outlier because most of the time, um, I mean, very, very rarely, like I'd say probably in 5% of cases, uh, it works. But then again, I guess maybe you brought something so exciting to a market that they'd never seen before, that they're like, I don't care. I just need to have this thing. Um, one question, how much are you charging uh, your clients in Portugal? In Portugal? Uh, that's yeah. a great question because I struggle with that a lot. I started in 1.3 thousand euros. That's about, I just took talking dollars, 1.5 thousand dollars, 1.7 and uh, stretched my, my 2.2 2 thousand dollars. And that's a lot here in Portugal for any company. <clears throat> yeah, not, not for Amazing. any company. I, I'm just telling you bullshit. Uh, not for most companies, is a lot. But hey, it's like it's companies. Some company has two thousand dollars extra a month. Come on, we, of just, course we are not in no, a third world country. <laughs> no, no, and, and people just don't understand the the fact that like there's a big difference between like a company's profit and then their uh, top line and then their expenses. Like mo like people don't understand once you get into you know people don't understand from the agency. Like my agency has really low margins, but then agency.com, I have like 80 to a hundred thousand dollars a month in expenses like that. When you have a big business, like that's the sort of scale you're talking at. And, um, you know, even most restaurants and whatnot, like, yes, they only maybe, uh, maybe making $6,000 a month, but their top line revenue is 80,000. And then the rest are all expenses. Um, and they're used to stomaching those sort of costs anyways. So I like the fact that you, um, stayed within Portugal, one little caveat that I do want to mention, though, is, look, to be honest, if you're in um, India, if you are in um, uh, Bangladesh, if you are in potentially even um, uh, Moldova, like those sorts of countries, like I will say Portugal is, I believe, probably in the top 30 countries in terms of uh, GDP, like you're in that upper echelon of countries where they could afford a service fee like that. Um, so Portugal, I think I'm sorry, just just to clarify that Portugal is is in the Europe. It's kind of like the lowest. It's like the poorest. 
And really? it, uh, no, I just looked. I just looked it up. Um, sure. It said, uh, yeah, it says GDP was was decent. Um, like here in parts of Europe, we we're constantly like in the in the talking about how poor Portugal is. <laughs> but <laughs> compared to the countries that you're mentioning, like we're rich. Mm. Mm, because that's, yeah. I, I get what you're saying. Like those countries, like even if you want to find the client, the, it must be pretty difficult. But in the panorama mm. of of Europe, we're pretty poor. Yeah. So you guys are have the 42nd highest GDP in the world. Um, yeah. You. So you guys are above like Russia. Um, let's see. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. A, a decent enough. But um, anyways, uh, I guess my point is. If in your country you're gonna to struggle to charge a thousand dollars, like at least a thousand dollars per month, like I would definitely, I would want to be a big fish. Sometimes it's better to be a big fish, um, a big fish in a small pond, as long as you can be a fish that can charge a thousand dollars a month at least. You know, because exactly. there's some countries where you know really all you're gonna get is five hundred, six hundred, seven hundred dollars per month, and that's at that scale, it's just not really worth it. Now, now that you have scaled your agency to fifteen thousand dollars per month, you mentioned that you have a intrigue in, in real estate. What purpose does your agency serve for you? Because as I said, I've talked to students um, where they just like the fact that they make $10,000 per month and chill in Bali and kind of relax. And that's the life they want to live. I have students who make $120,000 a month and they have an office and team and they love like, they want to scale that, that puppy up to 300 K a month. I have some people who literally just want to make 20 K a month, take 15 K a month, and then use that to put a deposit towards a new house and, and build up their real estate portfolio and get to a point where they're like fully, fully, fully retired by like 30. Um, what, what purpose does your agency serve for you? Yeah. And my audience, I want to build, you, you talk about it a lot and I, that's what resonates with, with me the most. Like build a proper business, build a business, not just a lifestyle thing. And I'm obsessed with that. I want to build a proper business first. I want to build uh, something that lasts, not just like to live a laptop life. And I want to be known uh, in this niche because I love real estate and I want to have connections with the top guys in real estate in my country. And next year I want to invest. I want to have cash flow to invest or at least when the thing crashes, I want to have some extra money to, to buy some stuff. And I already talk with a lot of real estate agents, talk to a lot of people. And I love, man, sometimes my sales calls, I, I completely diverge, that's my problem, I completely diverge from the goal of the sales calls, like just get to the, to the sales. Sometimes I start talking with them and I just get so, 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 I love so much to talk with about real estate and learn some cool things and things I never knew about real estate, things that, about the Portugal and the market. And I love real estate. I want to build a proper business first, a cash flow business, like you said. And then I want to, to start investing in real estate, build my portfolio, and that's it. And yeah, so that's also because uh, I'm not super focused in my margin right now uh, because um, I actually have a full-time employee and, uh, and it's, 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 she's a mother of three, so I'm pretty proud of that. And, and there's, there's another full-time employee coming. So it's pretty risky. It's a 15K, I'm not making that much money. And it looked like much money when I was at zero, but now, hey, man, this is not that much money. I thought I will be richer by now. But I, I'm hiring, I have, I paid all my, I have seven, Esteban is also, is also always ro roasting me because I have too much software. I love software. I have 700, Eight hundred dollars in software—it's too much for my agency right now. But at least I have at, at, at the point that, that my expenses, uh, I can sign ten clients in the next three months, but my expenses will stay the same. And yeah, that's it. Mm, amazing. And one thing I love about that sort of model is it's very synergistic because um, as your agency grows, your Avail the availability you have to off-market properties grows and your and once again we're not talking a huge personal brand or this that we're just literally talking like being known in the real estate industry as number one the person to the go-to person in order for realtors to grow sell more houses get more leads etc etc but then also 
someone with enough cash flow that you could potentially be a client for these realtors. And as I said, it, it's this synergistic thing. I mean, the best thing you can do, like, like that's where the, the power really comes from is having connections uh, in real estate. So you can get those uh, off market deals, those wedge deals, those deals where there is enough uh, buffer. Um, and no matter where the market kind of goes, um, you got it for a price where you, you, you know, you got for a price where you will never not make money. And for example, you can pull out equity out of it, et cetera, et cetera, you know, uh, going on a little rant right now, but, um, yeah, I, I love, yeah. I mean, I, I've been sitting cash heavy for a while, kind of similar to what you mentioned, um, knowing full well that, uh, within the next six to 12 months, the property prices are going to come tumbling down. And exactly. uh, if, you, if you're in a lucky position where you have an agency and you're, you know, you're, you've been collecting all your cash, um, you know, you're going to have a very, very good time over the next uh, year or so. So, um, tell me at this point, it seems like you've had a pre pretty long timeline. Like for a year you had an agency and then for like three months you worked for someone and then you've been running your agency again, properly for like seven months or like, when did you kind of first get into this world? If to, making the, the big leap, like focusing on one niche and going making the decision that I will build an actual agency. I will not be one foot in the agency, not in e-commerce, not in consulting. Um, that point, it was like two months ago. Two months. Yeah. With, yeah. Uh, with, the, so, with my only regret being, um, I mentioned that because I stopped prospecting for a while um, because I, I launched ads for my agency. I, I, I hate prospecting, man. I hate outreach. I hate that stuff. I love connecting. If I, I, I have a lot of talent for not talent, like just my personality to connect with people and talk about and talk with, uh, I'm just talking with the top real estate agents in my country by WhatsApp, like normal conversations. I love that. But I don't like the fact that I have to message like one hour a day. I have to outreach one hour a day and wait for the, the, the calls to come. And then they, when they come, it's kind of like, hey, like, yeah, you just push me to this call, like what you want. I really love it, like paid ads. I, I love it, loving it. And Portugal prices are like, you get calls for $200, man. I get calls for $12, $12 so take that. And <laughs> so I just, I have like, I have $500 to spare. I don't mind losing them. I'm just going to try it. I, I close the, all the windows in my office and just, spend one full day writing copy and all that stuff and figuring out what I'm going to launch. I launched and first, first couple of days I, I booked a full week. I just do sales calls on the afternoons. The, 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 the mornings is just for the agency, for the clients, for my team. And like I booked a full week. I'm like, oh my God, this works. And then I did that for two weeks. I signed four clients spending $10 a day. And I, I signed two, four clients, three clients, two recurring clients, because that's one thing I want to clarify. From those 15K, 10,000 10, are recurring, $5,000 are in, in down sales and pretty cool down sales. I can sell those a lot. And so I signed three clients, one down sale for 1.5K, 1.6K uh, uh, one time fee. And then I just kind of, because I work by areas, I can have much many agents in one area, otherwise I'm competing with myself. And I fully booked the, the, like the capital of Portugal, Lisbon. So, but then problems start to arise. Like it's just not lead generation because I have people, I do lead generation and I have that full-time employee making the calls, that mother of three and qualifying the leads on the phone and booking an appointment with the agent. That's why my offer is so outstanding. Like no one does this in Portugal. I'm just like a big fish in a small pond with a really unique offer. And they, I did that, I launched, but then I started having problems and but normal problems, normal agency problems, man. Like happen, happens to everyone. And instead of just like tuning down the prospecting, I completely stopped. Like I'm, I'm going to spend the, last, the, the next week and then turned out in two weeks and then three weeks just to building the systems and, and those, those things inside the agency to deliver better results because I, the, the woman was making phone calls out of a spreadsheet and that kind of got, got pretty messy. And so I just kind of building those stuff. But I should have never, ever, ever stopped taking appointments. I should never, ever stop prospecting. I should just tune it down a little bit because... 
I had so much lag when I started again doing the calls. Like I, I it's, it seems like I lose, I lost that momentum because when you sign one client on the call, it's like, uh, like uh, I don't know, the, it's like a flywheel effect. I don't know because you sign one, you get super pumped, and then you go to the next call like super pumped, and that energy is contagious. And I, I should never stop prospecting if, because if I if I didn't start prospecting by now without a shadow of a doubt, I'll be at 20k or 25k. But I stopped for three weeks, and I procrastinated a lot on those three weeks because it was a lot of heavy stuff, heavy thinking. And I didn't want to do that. I just love to talk with people. And so when I started doing the calls, I didn't know what to say again. And I was kind of discouraged. So bad decision. I should never stop prospecting and taking appointments. Mm. Yeah, yeah. It's a great book on that. It's called The Winner Effect. Um, how, you know, you get one win. It changes the, um, the, the neurochemistry in your brain. And then basically it just, that winner effect just keeps perpetuating. Uh, yeah. and, and sometimes it, it can get a, Starting it again is uh, can be a little tough at times, but um, yeah, dude, uh, this has been very, very enlightening, um, and uh, good to speak to such a such a big whale in a small pond. But uh, <laughs> it's good to see. I mean, everything from your offer, your positioning, to even just advertising. I mean, fuck me, I can imagine the CPMs are so low in in Portugal. And as you said, you know, for me, uh, for the agency, you know, we're having to spend. 200 uh, uh, pounds and we're from 120 to 250 pounds um to book in a call especially kind of the the areas that we're targeting like the the cpms are even higher uh because we're targeting info product and e-commerce business owners uh, so it's even higher than if we were targeting realtors or dentists or this or that um and you get calls booked in for for 12, 12 15 dollars so yeah yeah you know i can get the sales call yeah, yeah. So it seems like you're you're bullying your competition uh, in every single way. So it's it's awesome to see. And um, yeah, I appreciate you coming on. Yeah. Do you mind if I just give me a small like message or my experience with yeah, agency Peter? Because I, I get a lot of questions for Portuguese people that see you, mm -hmm. follow you on YouTube, on Instagram, and because they like they ask me if the the, the agency incubator course is is cool because on what what uh, what did it did for me, and the main thing also what you're talking what you were talking about because i didn't do everything that you said but the basis and this is really important the basis was always there like because my this is like my straightforward way of talking like i did this that and that but in the middle i was like hey i should do paper lead hey i should do commission work hey i should do that hey i should just do bank wires hey i should I should do so much thing and the course just like stick to the course, stick to the basis, stick to the basis. And that has been the most profitable thing. And then the community, like Esteban, um, it just like, it never gets tired. It answers everything. And that's the thing. Like I, 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 use, I used to pay for coaching calls, like $250 per call. And then I get like f lifetime calls and, <laughs> and lifetime questions with Esteban and you and everyone. Like I remember having a, a client with trouble and just posted on the group and like five minutes later, Esteban sends me private messages, like just help me. So my main value from that, from, from the Portuguese guy is just yeah, join the agency incubator, like learn the basis and use the group because the group and the calls is, is where the value is at. It's pretty cool. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate it. Thanks brother.